baptism of fire comes, it shows. Because fire is too conspicuous to be ignored. Fire generates heat. There's no cold fire. Fire is contagious. Fire cannot be contaminated. If you throw a contaminant in it, it will consume the contaminant. You use it as fuel and keep burning. No fly can perch on fire. When the baptism of fire occurs, disease will not jump on you. Sickness will not near your domain. When the baptism of fire comes, when you are going to the village, you tell them you are coming and they must leave before you arrive. When the baptism of fire comes, threats in your office must bow to you. Bible says, through the greatness of your power, will the enemy submit. They don't submit to grammar. And for that power to compare submission, there must be a baptism of fire. Only the hungry can be baptized. To be baptized means to be submerged. The baptism means you are immersed under. You are not baptized by sprinkling. You are baptized by being subdued. Until you are completely subdued, you are not set to be baptized. Some are borrowed fire. Some have felt fire. Some are around the heat of fire. Some have touched fire. But how many of you have been incubated by fire? When you are incubated by fire, you don't need deliverance. You are delivered. When you are incubated by fire, what you call monthly sickness, you won't see it again. When fire comes on the sacrifice, it purifies. The Bible says that the, the burning bush was burning, yet not consumed. When you are incubated by this fire, you are alive and ablaze. You are burning and not consumed. When people see you, they see fire. When they see you, they see power. You don't need to say, when they see you, they know that danger is on the move. So it's not for everybody. For those who want to return on a different gear, you, know you want to climb the hill, you change your gear. Those who want to ascend, you will pray very well. Say, my Lord and my God. Please, if you are on the group, let the fire show that you have touched it. Those that are on the group, let it show now. Because when you are ablaze, it will soon touch the other person. Because fire is contagious. Say, my Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. Fire that cannot be insulted. Fire that cannot be insulted. Please pray with perspective. You can insult candle light. You don't know me. If you want candle, just you say, I'm not here. Try it with a tanker that just exploded. Go and insult it. Fire that cannot be insulted. Are you here? Sir? Fire that cannot be insulted. It's a hard cry. It's not a prayer point. A lot of people play prayer point. Uh, 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 that's prayer point. When it is from your heart, it will show. When someone is praying for me, sir, you will see it. The same lady that will get provoked in the morning, those that steal her testimony, when they came again, they met fire. When they came again, something else came from the same well. Say fire that cannot be insulted. Fire that cannot be insulted. My life is available. My life is available. But, but, the crisis of the end time church, in this our church now, is that it's an association. When you come to a church that they're this kind of prayer, you'll be looking like, is this church? What's happening here? Where I used to go, we used to speak, is the word, the word, the word. You think we don't have word here? You will soon find out. Say fire that can, mommy, close your eyes. Fire that cannot be sorted. Fire that cannot be sorted. My life is available. My life is available. All of me There are people here that the missing link in the equation of your shining is fire. Yes. When the fire comes, the world will watch you more. Yes. The Bible says John the Baptist sir, was a burning and shining light. Yes. In other words, he was burning as he was shining. Mm. So he was shining in a place where you can't attack him. Mm. If you shine without burning, they will quench your light. Yes. But when you are shining, sir, and you are burning, they will respect you. You better pray. You want to kick in your life like football. I speak to some families here. You don't have a family altar. Go and erect it all because there's a wave coming. It will meet you standing. Amen. Go and repair your prayer altar. You are, you are married. You have a wife. You guys don't meet to pray. There's no devotion. Uh, uh, uh. Your house will not be desolate. Amen. Are you ready to pray? Shout fire! Fire! Only what you call answer. Yes. If you don't want it, sir, you can't get it. Only those that desire, I'm talking about people that will live here and that will become embodiments of signs and wonders. 
I'm talking of people that will live here as custodians of his grace. Yeah. And not people that will live here and go back to nonsense. People that will live here and go back as solutions. Amen. If you're not person, shout fire! Fire! Say, oh Lord my God! Incubate me with your fire! Incubate me with your fire! In the name of Jesus! Oh Lord my God! Incubate me! Oh, pray. Amen. Two more prayers. Persuaded that I'm sent to certain people. Yes. You will lift up your two hands. Every chain in my life. Every chain in my life. Say louder. Every chain in my life. Every chain in my life. Every chain in my life. Say no to the power of God. Say no to the power of God. Say no to the fire. Say no to the fire. Jump up. Jump up. Jump up. The year they must obey. They must obey. The stranger must submit. All eyes closed, please. The stranger must fade away and be afraid. Anything hiding in your body, sleeping and waking with you, frustrating the fire of God. As we say to the amen, now close your hands. Let there be separation now. Hey, yes, hey, man. Yes, hey, man. Separation of the spirit of failure. Separation of disappointment at the edge of breakthrough. Separation of rejection. Mm. Focus, focus. The spirit of God is here. The power of God. Move. Move. What about watch the back, please? Separation. 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 Separation, 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 separation. Every mark on your life that has disallowed the mark of God. Close your eyes, sir. You are not yet to lose. Lift up your hands, please. In the name of Jesus. I speak to seven of you under the sound of my voice. As you say one amen now. Let there be separation now. Amen. Last prayer. Last prayer. God wants to help some people. Because we are going to pray last prayer and it's very simple. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Consume me. Listen, your emphasis is consume me now. Consume me. Now. Don't look left, don't look right. If you need to groan, groan. When the fire fell, sir, there was a reaction. They said something else. They were timid, they became bold. They took over territory. Jerusalem knew they had a visitation because fire fell. The fire that will consume you, everybody will know something has changed around you. Be focused. Be focused. Be focused. Be focused. You will shout the fire of God three times. Then you will continue. Consume me. Spirit, soul, and body. Are you ready? Say, fire of God! Fire of God! Fire of God! Fire of God! God wants to have somebody. Fire of God! Fire! Are you here? Fresh fire. 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 Fresh in Jesus' name, we pray. Lift up your hands. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. 21 of you. 21. Fresh fire. Quiet. Take a deep breath. Holy Ghost. Move. Where are they? That's number one. That's number one. Two, three. Four at the back. 21 people. Fresh fire. 21. Just 21. That's number five. Take it. Somebody follow me, please. That's number five. Number five. Number five. Number five. Six. Don't fight it. Take it. Fresh fire. Don't fight it. Don't fight it. Don't fight it. Don't fight it. Mata Coco. 21 of you. 
Egege, keep an eye on please. There are 21 of them that must release with tongues. 21, 21, 21, 21, 21. Take it. 21. Number 9. Lift up your hands, please. A new anointing must follow you. Holy Ghost, touch. Don't fight it. That's number 10. 10. Take it. Zuke Pali Kenduke here. Take it. Number 11. Fresh fire. Don't fight it. Take it to Kuka. Botelia Makuru. 13. Somebody here by there. Insult is too much. It's Take it, Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. 14. Enough of insult. A dekemu kariya nis. Ango gadia. Izokoli ambra atokia. Let the fire go and convert you. Now. 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 Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Zuneki ototokula. Ezekeli ambra atokia. We need fresh fire. If you are not hungry, you can't get it. It is your turn. It is your time. Amen. Settled forever. Amen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Put your hands together for Jesus. And be seated in God's presence. God bless you. Isaiah 65, verse 18 to 23. I'll be speaking to us today on what I've captioned um, on the tide of joy. Praise God. On what? The tide of joy. And um, last week we dealt with on the wings of what? Thanksgiving. But today we'll be looking at on the tide of what? Joy. Isaiah 65 verse 18 says, For be ye glad and what rejoice. For whatever in that which I create, for behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and a people a joy. Joy is a subject so abstract that very few churches talk about it. Joy is not happiness. There's a difference. Joy is a force in redemption. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So the tripod that sustains the kingdom of Christianity, joy is a major. The Bible spoke in the book of Galatians chapter 5 that the fruit of the spirit is love. After love, the ultimate is joy. Love, joy, peace. You don't take things carelessly because the Bible understands the principle of first mention. Joy is not just a word. Joy is a mystery. And we have ignored it like Thanksgiving because it is hidden in plain sight. I said last week that uh, Thanksgiving is a commandment that puts you in command. But you must understand that the foundation for Thanksgiving is joy. Because until a man is joyful, he can't be songful. Because at the root of inspiration is joy. If you are not excited, you can't be inspired. And when a man is not inspired, he will inspire. Because inspiration gives birth to inspiration, fresh ideas. But when you are not inspired, you become dis depressed, discouraged, and suicidal. So at the root of inspiration is joy. And at the root of frustration is sorrow. The reason why you are sad frustrated is because something troubles you. A sorrowful spirit. Joy is a spirit. Sorrow is a spirit. And if you don't know how important joy is, if you read Isaiah 61, one of the major reasons Jesus came is to give you the oil of joy. The oil of joy for the spirit of evidence. So we understand from that scripture, because oil represents spirit. Joy is a spirit. Heaviness, sorrow, that make you think your life is finished is also a spirit. Listen, don't let anything break your heart or it will break your body with it. Proverbs 17, 22 says, A merry heart doeth good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. When it breaks your heart, it will break your body. At the root of every affliction 
is the spirit of sorrow. I went to an hospital owned by a Christian and he wrote it there. He said, before we attend to you, the first way to recovery is to smile. He said, because if you are not healed within, no doctor can heal you without. People have been going in and out of hospital and they have become regular candidates because of the spirit of sorrow. I decree for your tears this morning, let there be the oil of joy. For the spirit of heaviness, let there be the oil of joy. For your tears, let there be spirit of joy. In the name of Jesus Christ. So he said, Jerusalem shall be rejoicing and now people joy. Joy is so important that God changed Jerusalem's name and called it rejoicing. God changed the name of the Jews as citizens and called them joy. You don't call people joy except they are joyful. You don't call a city rejoicing except there's always the noise of gladness. When a people are rejoicing, the Bible recorded in Numbers 23 that the shout of a king is amongst them. No extremely joyful person can be defeated in battle. When you are joyful, even the devil is fearful. When a man is full of joy, the devil does not know your domain. He looks at him and says, we just did this and he's still laughing. What are we going to do with this one? He's tired already because your life becomes a puzzle. He said, and I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. Why is God with them? When a man is full of joy, he is a carrier of divine presence. Because Psalm 16 verse 11 says, in his presence there is what? Fullness of joy. So because Jerusalem is a rejoicing and our people enjoy it, God said, I will rejoice in Jerusalem. I decree, God will rejoice over your house. By the reason of your constant aura, your life will be an atmosphere that will accommodate divine presence. In the name of Jesus Christ. He said, and the voice of weeping. Hallelujah. Every promise of scripture, you will see the mother that made the promise to happen there. The scripture is not a magic book. It's a book of cause and effect. Everything you see before you claim the promise, read it from behind. The secret behind the promise you want to claim is always before the promise because God is a God of conditions. Psalm 74, verse 20 says, It is by my covenant that you earn my respect. And if you look at this now, he said, The voice of weeping shall not be heard. Why? Because I will rejoice in them. When God is happy with you, no devil can kill your children. When God is rejoicing over you, no idiot can take your job. When God is excited about your destiny, nobody can kill you. When God is with you or is going with you, everything goes great with you. That's why Moses said, we came this far because you are with us. If you will not continue with us, don't take us further. We don't want an angel. We want your presence. Prayer can provoke angel to be with you, but joy will bring God down. I decree everyone that has frustrated their keeper with a frozen face, with a sorrowful spirit, I decree the tide will turn for you. As you ride on the tide of joy, God will come back on the scene. He will sit in your boat and your boat will not turn. In the name of Jesus Christ. So he said, because I will rejoice in them, the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. Next verse. There shall be no more days in front of days, just on the platform of joy. Nobody will die young in your family. I remember the story of one man that was diagnosed, I'm telling you, life story. It was diagnosed of a, kind, a rare kind of cancer. They just said, put your house in order. You will die in six months. You know the kind of cancer that gives you a death sentence? Not in Nigeria when you have cancer. They'll be testing on malaria. They say, we don't know what's doing. No, 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 no. They have discovered what it is and they have sentenced him to death. So he had a couple of friends because they were fairly mature men. So they will play a particular message that the preacher was very funny. And they will laugh from the beginning of the message to the end. Laughing and waiting for the time of their death. Only for six months to pass, the man didn't die. They will be laughing. Then they went to check. Every time you are extremely joyful, your body releases an enzyme that brings about a release and a relief from every form of affliction. No wonder the Bible says that a merry heart doeth good like medicine. If it cannot break your heart, it cannot break your life. No matter what has happened, what has happened is what you know. What would have happened, you didn't know. There is something meant to happen that God did not permit. If your eyes can be open to see what was meant to happen, your perspective will change. Are you kidding me? If you knew what was meant to lose, you, what you were meant to lose. <laughs> if you have lost something, God is the reason why you have not lost everything. Gain perspective. Is it 
there shall be no more infant of days. Nor an old man that has not fulfilled his days. For a child. That's when you are 100, you are even a child. If an 100 year old man dies, those of us that are 100 say, ah, that small boy. Just died like that. When a 100 year old person dies, those of us that are 120, ah, we say that small boy just died. Maybe he didn't hear me, those of us. That I want to say, ah, that small boy, he's just a hundred, though. That's what the Bible says, a child, sir, not an adult. So when he says, ah, they succeeded in killing this guy, he's just a hundred. Those of us that are 120, that's what we'll be saying. <laughs> Praise God. He said, but the sin of being an hundred shall be a cause. Next verse, please. What did he say? And they shall build houses on the platform of them being a rejoicing and a joy. They shall build houses and they shall inhabit. Amen. Anyone waiting for you to walk so that they can inherit, I decree that we aspire in waiting. Amen. Anyone waiting for you to labor so that they will take your place, they will die waiting. Amen. Anyone waiting to reap the harvest of your struggles, I decree by the stone in Zion, they will be grinded to powder. Amen. Anyone that has watched you labor for that organization and at the time of your promotion, they want to unseat and sack you. I declare their agenda will fall upon their own head. You see, and inhabit, and they shall plant vineyards and what? Eat the fruit. Next verse, Shekin, please. They shall not build and another inhabit. Say amen to that. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree, some trees grow to 200, 300. As the days of a tree, so are the days of age. I claim it. So are the days of my people and my elect <laughs> shall long enjoy. Yes. Yes, sir. You will sit down and they'll be reminding you of houses you have built. They'll say they see one house somewhere, you have not collected the rent. <laughs> Investment will be too much. You will need an account. You're not hearing me. They shall long enjoy the works of their hands. I decree in the name of Jesus Christ. God will move you from labor to favor. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. Your portion forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. So joy is a feeling of great pleasure. According to the dictionary, happiness, bliss, cheer, delight, elation, ecstasy. There is no man or woman at the peak of sexual ecstasy that frowns. Am I correct? Someone here now. All of you are looking left. Nobody, listen carefully, because you are all matured men. Who is at the peak of ecstasy and he frowns? I said, What's happening here? No, he's like a fool. He doesn't know what's happening again. He, he loses their color. That's what joy is. When the spirit of joy comes around, the people will think you are intoxicated. People will think you are high. The spirit of joy makes a man naturally high. He's just excited. They will say, no, there's a spirit at work. And that spirit, when it's in you, sir, it is contagious. Everyone that comes around you, they'll just discover they're happy. They're laughing. There's, someone came and said that this church, and they too, they laugh. If you too, they cry. Go to church where they cry. Have you not had enough of frown throughout the week? You now come to the presence of God and said to have the fullness of joy. And now make you cry again. And now begin to tell you, you will all born. You will, how, will you be, how will you be happy? You have been born since the week. And now came to tell you, you will still born. Even if I talk about hell, I will laugh because I'm not going there. Uh, are you going there? Me, yeah, I'm not raising candidates for it. Those that want to go. You will make it. So, joy is likened to ecstasy. It is a fruit of the spirit. It is a kingdom mystery. An asset that guarantees divine presence. Why must I rejoice? Number one, it's a commandment. Philippians 3 verse 1, sir. Paul said, rejoice again. I say rejoice. He said, to write the same thing for me to you is not grievous or burdensome. He said, but for you it is safe. He said, rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. Finally, my brother, rejoice. It's a commandment, sir. It's not about choice. In case you don't know why you should, first understand that God has commanded you. Are you with me? When you were growing up as a spiritually, as a spiritual child of God, you were told not to steal. You didn't ask the reason. 
Maybe one day you mistakenly stole. When you now saw the consequence, you say, oh, this is why God says, you. you must not be punished to take dressing. When God says rejoice, rejoice quickly so that there will be no need for sorrow. Paul said, rejoice. I'm writing the same thing to you. It's not because I'm stupid. I'm well lettered, but it is safe for you to know that you must rejoice always. If it is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, is it 1st or 2nd Thessalonians chapter 5 now? Verse 16. He said, rejoice evermore. It's a commandment, sir. He said, rejoice what? Evermore. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. Rejoice evermore. It's a continuous command because for you, it is safe. If you read that same Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. In the same book, Paul was talking again. He said, rejoice. Again, I say, rejoice. No excuse. Rejoice in the Lord always. How many times? Always. Don't rejoice in your husband. He may disappoint you. Don't rejoice in your spouse. She may cheat on you. Oh yes, it's popular now. Everybody's cheating. It's a feminine world. If you think you are a man, before men think they're the only one man, women are checkmating them. If you cheat, I cheat. We are balanced. You have sugar girl, I have gigolo. We are balanced to the Lord in this generation. So you don't rejoice in people because people are afraid, inconsistent. The best you get from man is disappointment. That's why Paul said, rejoice in the Lord, not in man. Man will fail you well, but the Lord guarantees faithfulness. He said, rejoice in the Lord, don't rejoice in your car. Rejoice in the Lord, don't rejoice in your house. <laughs> rejoice in the Lord, don't rejoice over your children, may they not disappoint you. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, it's a command. And when you are joyful and you obey this scriptural command, you naturally become a commander. When a man is joyful, he's never stranded. Are you aware? When you are confused, you won't know what to do. You are stuck. But when you are joyful, in the midst of adverse circumstances, an inspiration will come that will give you a solution. Solution don't come to sorrowful people. May God give us understanding. And that's why Solomon, sir, was the wisest. And the Bible said he wrote 3,000 proverbs and sang 1,500 songs. Are you here, sir? Is any merry? Let him sing. So you can see that there's a parallel, sir, between songs and wisdom. And at the root of song is a merry heart, which is joy. So if you want to stay wise, stay joyful. Stay full of joy. Because it is safe for you. If a man is joyful, he can never be depressed. A man is joyful, you tell him to kill himself. Which voice? How does he want to get into the atmosphere? You want to die. A man wanted to kill himself. The Nigeria now is as rich. He got himself ready to die. As he was about to die, somebody came from inside the bush with leaf covering his private part. He said, do you want to kill yourself? He said, yes. He said, please, before you die, I don't want to remove the wristwatch from the hand of a dead man. Can you pull it? It looked like my size. And your shoe, is it 45? I know you want to die. Please die, but pull your shoe. <laughs> die your shirt. You don't have to die with these things. You can die naked. Me, I don't have what to wear. And I, but I have something to live for. <laughs> listen. Listen, sir. To be, <laughs> you are alive, sir. I sh anything. It is not over. Are you with me, sir? <laughs> it doesn't matter where you start. <laughs> it is the end that matters. When I joined the force, people look at me and say, oh, please. I am telling you the truth. A jare boy, Ajabota. Read Ajabota's, call me Ajabota. And I say, attention, at ease. I find work, I see. So, you know, marching then, I look like a log of wood. One guy came to me, I don't want to mention his name. He said, ah, come on. They said all of that. But it's the beginning they know. I don't know where they are, sir, but every one of them know where I am. So, don't look at yourself and cause yourself that God is over with you. Mm -mm, mm -mm. God has just started. God has just started. It's a commandment that puts you in command. Hey, I decree, you will know what to do. Number two. When a man is joyful, he has access to unusual depth. We're praying a prayer during the, during the revival hour, and I said something. 
I said the depth of prayer is deep. There are depths, sir. If you dig a one feet, it's a depth. But there's a depth that calls another depth deep. <laughs> Joy is a mystery of unusual depth. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 12 verse 3 that with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. So, so, this Christianity I'm talking about is like a well that has all the water that can quench any test. You want husband, none shall lack a meat. You want children, none shall be barren. You want prosperity, you will lend to nations. Anything you want is inside. But before you can access it, if a man stands beside a deep well, sir, can he get water to satisfy himself? If you are before a well, you have been checking for days, you are about to die, ha, ha, you get to the well. What is it that you jump in and die? Or you get something to draw? What will bring out water from the well of salvation is joy. That is why a lot read the Bible and the letter is killing them. The life that will change their story can only be accessed by joy. Joy is your covenant access to the deep things of God. He said, with joy shall you draw water from the well of salvation. Anyone said that is always happy, he will have a solution. He uh -uh. said, the road is blue. Others are gaining speed. You will go forward though. Your case sir, is not critical. If you see critical case, you will thank God that your case is okay. Your case, <laughs> critical. Your, your <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> so, joy is your what? <laughs> God. God will help us. So. <laughs> if you hear the story of some unions, you will thank God for your marriage. <laughs> are you hearing me now? The marriage that you jack up, you say you are walking away. When you see other cases, you discover that you don't have sense. You will thank God. Your, your marriage is heaven. And you see marriage that the man can't come home. Uh, uh, Tyson one lay. <laughs> Try it. <laughs> I was canceling somebody, sir, some days ago. He woke up not to see wife and children. He went out and came back. They left him. Say he's jobless. That's his only offense. He doesn't have work. Two years later, he had not seen his children until I was speaking. They now invited him to court in absentia to claim full custody. The man said he just looked at a spam account. He saw a mail from a lawyer. They have judged him twice. The third one to finish his life, not to see his children. Then he showed up. Then the judge said, This man is who you call not responsible. Case adjourned. You will not miss God. Amen. Number what? So, why must I rejoice? It's the secret to divine strength. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10 said something that will change your perspective forever. He said, be ye not sorry for yourself. For the joy of the Lord shall be your strength. Read the last verse. Forget about the story in the beginning. He said, Neither be ye sorry for yourself, for the joy of the Lord is what? Your strength. Don't feel sorry. Don't wait till people tell you what's happening. You should be the one to ask them what's happening to you. Some people will enjoy a pity party. They just go, wah, wah. I say, sorry, say, thank you. What are you doing with that? May you not be in a place where they'll tell you sorry. You should be the one to ask them, how is your condition? Because if you are never in the place they'll tell you sorry, sir. God will take you out of the pit. Joseph was in prison before they landed those two guys in prison. He was still the one that asked them, why are you sad? Go and read your Bible well because there are some things that are not written. He was in the prison for an offense he didn't commit. Who should be more sorrowful? He was sold by his brothers. Who should be most pitiable? But he was too joyful to be sorrowful. And when he got there, ah, uh -uh. They landed two people in the palace of Pharaoh that were serving the king. He was still asking them, what's your problem? They said, ah, it's Pharaoh. He said, we even had a dream. He said, tell me, it's a dream that brought me here. I landed in trouble by dream. And because of joy, he was interpreting to those that will help him tomorrow. Hey, when you begin to look at your life and say, why me? You will miss your helper. Don't be sorry for yourself, sir. There are people looking at your life and say, if I can be like you, don't be sorry for yourself. 
Sonny will not change your position. It will not bless you. It will not make you fat. It will not bring you power. Sonny will not change anything. And if you're waiting, people will even come and tell you, what happened? You say, hey, I don't know. You say, what do you do with your life? They will even insult you on top of it. Don't, don't, don't do that. I mean, Sonny does not attract favor. It's only God that can send help us. Is not wasting your life being pitiable. Create time to pray so that God will send and come on help to you. Help us will find you. Why must I be joyful? Like I said earlier, it is for your safety. To write the same thing to you is not burdensome, but for you, it is what? Safe. Number five. Why must I be joyful? It is to retain God, the ever-present help in time of need. As a fish cannot survive outside water, God cannot stay in an environment that is joyless. Is someone here? Everything has a natural habitat. The habitat of God is the habitat of joy, thanksgiving, and praise. So if you are not full of praise, full of joy, God cannot stay. So I'll mention dangers of not being joyful. Then we'll continue next week because of time. When a man is not joyful, he becomes vulnerable to sickness and disease. I will tell you why. Like we read in Proverbs 17:22, that a merry are doeth good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. The Bible also says that the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a broken spirit will come bear. When a man is not joyful, he's sorrowful. When you are not grateful, you will grumble. Nature abhors vacuum. You cannot be in between. So when you are not full of joy, you must be full of complaints. And when you are grumble, God will ensure you crumble. I will tell you why. The Bible says, murmur not. And some of them murmured in the wilderness and they were destroyed by the destroyer. Why do you think they ate manna for 40 years? You think God didn't have another diet? God is the owner of Evans Bakery. They were on manna as the permanent diet because they complained. Do you know the meaning of manna? Manna means, what is this? It's not God that gave the name. Oh. They gave the food name. Because of their useless complaining spirit. Now, you didn't cook. You didn't light stove. You did not bring pot. You just saw food. And when they gave you food, instead of you say, thank you, Jehovah. The first thing you say, what is this? And God said, hey, that is it for 40 years. <laughs> is someone here? Those of you that is drinking Gary and coconut and say, what is this? That's why Gary has not changed. What is this food? I'm tired of this. This is house. Beast, hello. Eh, why check me? But when you say, thank God, your diet will change. Because you are, you are having this and I think about yourself. What is this? Eh, that's why Apu has not changed. What is, eh, what is it? It will remain like that. I'm not saying Apu is not good food. Pardon me, please. But when you are grateful for the finger, you will see the hand. Praise God. Is someone blessed already? So, I'll just mention the last two, then we'll pray. When a man is not joyful, his harvest becomes destroyed. Joel chapter 1, verse 10 to 12 said, Everything we planted did not yield harvest, because joy has withered away from the hearts of men. When joy withers away, sir, it withers away your harvest. You have expectation now. Be dancing before it comes. Because when joy goes, your expectation goes with it. He said that the tree of the olive will fail because joy has withered away from the hearts of men. When joy goes, your blessing follows, not your portion in Jesus' name. So when you go, <laughs> they say, why? Say, well, okay. <laughs> Let them know you are mad for God. Hey, Mashio, if I ask you to bring cow for your solution, you will bring it to this thing is simple. Don't let it corrupt you. When you get home, dance like a fool. Dance without reading. Then we find out in subsequent days the reason for your excitement. Because when they mock your praise, God is about to make you a testimony. Are you with me now? Dangers of not being joyful. It can cost you your salvation. That's why I call the joy of salvation. And lastly, when a man is not joyful, he becomes sorrowful. He becomes depressed, like I said earlier, and he becomes what? Suicidal. Bow down your heads.